seated. I'm going to ask that Judy and Lisa come forward. Judy McQueen is president of our United Methodist Women, and Lisa is over our youth department. We're going to be recognizing our high school graduates and Shauna Albert, who's gotten her master's degree. So, yes. so we would like for, for everyone to come on down so they can see you and they can give you your presentation. the great privilege of when one of our students graduates to give them a Bible and this Bible is for them to take on to school to keep on studying we are supposed to keep our children studying all the time and I hope that they will use this Bible they're given I'm going to be giving them the Wesley study Bible Ben Holly Use this, it will help you whenever you're in trouble. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Ben, Ben. Nick Martin. Yeah. Ben, you get to stay up. <laughs> Valerie, we are so proud of what you have accomplished and we thank you and good luck. Nick, <laughs> thank you, Nick. Um, please keep this with you. Use it, because there'll be a lot of temptations out there. <laughs> I'd like the United Methodist women to stand. They are the ones that purchase these Bibles. If the women will stand, that help me with this. They're being bashful they today. They're being bashful All right. today. Thank you all so much. And for our grad, just if you're wondering, Shauna got her, the Bibles are for the high school graduates. And of course, I, I will tell you what I was told when I got my master's, and that is we expect you to have it memorized. <laughs> Thank you all very much. At this time, we're going to go to God in prayer, and I'm going to ask Lisa to come back up and to kneel at the altar. You see, Lisa and her sister and her sister's friend are going on the bishop's trip to the Holy Land on Tuesday. So for Lisa and all of those who are going to go visit the Holy Land, we're going to say a prayer for them. And are there others that you would like us to pray for this morning? If you could. Yes. Please remember Becky Sewell. She fell this morning. She's at home. Um, she's doing okay, and their daughter's with them. But please remember Becky. And we have a special prayer for Bill and Julia Dyson. They are celebrating their 65th anniversary. Wow. Jill and Julia and Bill are they're here. They're here. There they are, back in the corner hiding. Would you please stand? <laughs> Thank you. For those high school and master's degree graduates, if you think you accomplished something, you ain't got nothing on them, trust me. <laughs> 65 years of marriage. God bless you. Let's pray. We'll, at the end of the prayer, we're going to close with the Lord's Prayer, and you'll find that printed in your bulletin. Lord Jesus, for us so far away, the idea to walk, on the ground that you walked. 
is both frightening and privilege. I ask that you would bless all those that are traveling. Keep them safe. Let their eyes be open to seeing all there is to see. Let their hearts be open to feeling all the feels that there are, to be able to see the Sea of Galilee, to see the faces of men and women that we know have just walked that ground so much every day. And for those times and places where there's been bloodshed and war, we ask your forgiveness. We thank you for Lisa and her sisters and their courage to go. We ask you to bless everyone's trip. We ask you to bless those today who are going on the journey of aging. It is certainly not for wimps. We ask you to be with the families that care for them, the medical staff that learn more about what aging means to our bodies and how to improve that each and every day. We thank you this day for those who are journeying on to high school and those who may even go on to get their doctorate degree that they might teach others. We thank you for our campers and their families and all they've learned this week. Most of all, God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came to show us the way as we pray the prayer. He taught all those who had the courage to follow him to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we receive our morning offering, and one of the kids said, what's that? That is our opportunity to give back out of what God has blessed us with. God gives us everything and provides for us. To take an offering means that you're investing in the lives of students, in the lives of campers, in the lives that those who will go and journey far away in missionaries. When we give into God's kingdom, it doesn't just last a moment, it lasts for all eternity. The way we do that now is there are offering plates where you can bring up a gift and leave it there, or you can leave it at the one at the door as you leave. We hope that you will enjoy, and David's going to share something special with you during offering.
Okay. <laughs> We're praying, exactly. Everyone at this time, please pray that technology works. Anytime you want to show a video that's really important, you know what happens. We have gremlins, so. Do the fishy song by yourself if it doesn't work? Okay, we're going to do the fishy song first. Oh, there they are. Yay! It's working down here on the TV. We have a cheat thing. Oh, no. There it goes. So we can see the video. <laughs> Wait, it's, it's somebody we know. You ready? Pardon? Counselors, we'll do slideshow at the end. Okay. Huh? Oh, okay. All right, ladies. Step on the step. Be careful, though, when you're on the steps. Don't fall. You want to go all the way up so you don't fall? You better go up so you don't fall. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Make some more room. Spread out. You're going to be moving. Ready? <laughs> Do we have sound? There we go. Look. If I go, no. Can we go with you? No? Okay. Are you bashful? You, you want to go help Mr. Jeremy? Well, we know it worked. While we're waiting, would you ladies like to tell you? Oh, there she comes. Okay. Hi everyone, sorry we couldn't be with you this morning, but we are Camp in the Community, and my name is Danae, and I was the site coordinator at Colonial Heights this week. I'm Kelly, I'm the assistant site director. I'm Natalie, I'm a counselor. I'm Destiny, I'm a counselor. So this week with your kids we did some songs, so we're going to do two of their favorite ones for you guys this morning. Um, feel free to join in. This one's called Fishy Wishy. <laughs> you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever gone fishing on a bright sunny day? Watching all the little fishies swimming up and down the bay with your hands in your pockets and your pockets in your pants. Watching all the little fishies do a fishy wishy dance. Tra la 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 la, tra la la la, tra la 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 la, tra la la la. With your hands in your pockets and your pockets in your pants. Watching all the little fishies do a fishy wishy dance. Faster, 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 faster. Have you ever gone fishing on a bright sunny day? Watching all the little fishies swimming up and down the bay with your hands in your pockets and your pockets in your pants. Watching all the little fishies do a fishy wishy dance. Tra la 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 la, tra la la la, tra la 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 la, tra la la la. With your hands in your pockets and your pockets in your pants. Watching all the little fishies do a fishy wishy dance. One more time. One more time. Fast as you can. Fast as you can. Okay. Have you ever gone fishing on a bright sunny day? Watching all the little fishies swimming up and down the bay with your hands in your pockets and your pockets in your pants. Watching all the little fishies do a fishy wishy dip. Tra la 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 la, tra la la la, tra la la la, tra la la la. With your hands in your pockets and your pockets in your pants. Watching all the little fishies do a fishy wishy dip. Awesome. Oh, all right, the next song we're going to do is called Peace Like a River. And our kids will make sure you know the motions, but we're going to say Peace Like a River. We're going to do Love Like an Ocean and joy like a fountain in my soul, in my soul. And then we're gonna do them all together. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul, in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like 
Can ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got peace, love, joy like a river. I've got peace, love, joy like an ocean. I've got peace, love, joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got peace, love, joy like a river. I've got peace, love, joy like an ocean. I've got peace, love, joy like a fountain in my soul. And that's fine, you Your kids have also learned Spanish. <laughs> Tango pas, como un rio. Tango pas, como un rio. Tango pas, como un rio. En mi ser. Tango pas, como un rio. Tango pas, como un rio. Tango pas, como un rio. En mi ser. Tengo amor como el mar, tengo amor como el mar, tengo amor como el mar en mi ser. Tengo amor como el mar, tengo amor como el mar, tengo amor como el mar en mi ser. Alegría como la fuente, alegría como la fuente, alegría como la fuente en mi ser. Alegría como la fuente, alegría como la fuente, alegría como la fuente en mi ser. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Can you put the screen up? Do you know how to put the screen up? Oops. Oh, I just about ran over you. Okay, you sit down. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, yes, we wait. Jeremy, can you show just a couple of minutes of them at camp? And then both we have upstairs during lunch, there'll be the, all of the pictures. Okay, well, take that back then. We can go ahead and put the screen up and the lights up just a little. And we will have lots and lots of pictures, hopefully, during lunch on the TV, as well as pictures of our graduates. Now, I've asked the ladies to stay down here with me because they're going to help me preach this morning, aren't you? These are our lessons from this week. And the very first scripture that was the theme that's on our t-shirts is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 16. And Jesus said this on his Sermon on the Mount. He said, You are the light of the world. A city built on the hill cannot be hid. No one lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand where it can be seen and gives light to the whole house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to the Father in heaven. During our first morning devotion, we learned about this. You see, sometimes in church we do things and we just assume everybody knows why we do it. Ladies, who can tell me, why did we light this candle and what is it called? Nice and loud. Uh, it is. It is the Christ candle and it re represents Jesus and reminds us of Jesus' presence with us wherever we go. And then what is Amelia going to do with this light at the end of worship? Remember what I said that she did? At the end, what do we do with it? Does anybody remember? Yes. We carry it. She's going to carry it out. And what that means is we don't keep Jesus here amongst ourselves. We take Jesus out into the world so everybody can see the light, right? Then we talked about John 1.18, 1 through 1.18, which there is nothing that will humble a theologian or even somebody with an MDiv like trying to explain the first part of 1 John to a group of children. Because I'm not a poetry person and John is, but I will read the first part to you. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. 
All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And what we decided, the best way to explain that is Jesus has always been with God. Before the earth, before people, since the beginning of time, Jesus has been there. And that Jesus came as God's love letter. Do you guys remember that? Jesus came as God's love letter to us. And who can remember what the phrase to shed light means? Does anybody remember that? Nope, we've slept since then. To shed light means that it explains things. Like I'm shedding light on what shedding light means. It means to explain it so that you can understand it in a way that makes sense. And Jesus came so that we might be able to make sense of God in some way, that we would be able to know God better. He sheds light on God through, uh, for us through his word, through his teaching, from what he says, from what he does, and how he treats people, both those who love him and those who don't, right? Jesus treated everybody with love, right? Jesus helps us to understand God better, God's love, God's mercy, God's grace and forgiveness and what that means. But Jesus also helps us to understand ourselves better, doesn't he? Jesus helps us to understand other people. And he taught us how to live and to walk in the light. But in that passage, it says not everybody wants to walk in the light, do they? And so they choose to stay in the darkness. Now, ladies, here's pop quiz again. Where, where does the light come from? And the light bulbs, and where are they? They know the secret. Inside. So when we take Jesus into our heart, the light of God comes from the inside out, right? Okay, now, see if I can do this without falling down the steps. In John 3, 17, go back to John. We did John a lot, didn't we? Yes, we did. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but he have eternal life. You see, God didn't send his son into the world to condemn it, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So for those who believe in him, they are not condemned, but those who do not believe, they're condemning themselves because they've not believed in the one and only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and the people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all those who do evil hate the light and don't come to the light so that their deeds might not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that they may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The light came into the world, and some people just prefer to be in the darkness, even if they know about the light. They prefer that. They don't do what's right. Then others come to the light and do what's pleasing to God. Now, this lamp, remember my lamp? It works in my office, doesn't it? And it's got a light bulb, doesn't it? But it's, it's not on. It's not working. How come? Because it's not plugged in. Exactly. And we can't give off light unless we're connected to Jesus, right? How do we connect with Jesus, ladies? Nice and loud so they can hear you. It's the easiest way in the world to connect with Jesus and to help serve others and be a light is to smile. Easiest thing in the world. How else can you connect to Jesus? Respect others. Help people. Serving others as being a light in the world and connecting to Jesus. How else do we connect with Jesus? Help clean up the world. That's right. Keep things nice, right? Not throw trash on the ground. Yeah. How else can we connect with Jesus? Clean your room, yes, that's a good way, yep. Yes, parents, they learned that when they help you and they clean the rooms, that's also serving, showing that they love you. Yes, 
How else? Do you, let me see, there it is. Stand, can you stand up one more time for me? And yeah, no, we're going to show them how to, because a lot of them don't know how to do this. Okay, can you come and come up here in front of the altar, and we'll show them all three ways that we learn to pray. The first way we learned is you can pray like this, looking up to God with your hands, outreached like you want to give God a big hug. This is the way the early Christians preached. For those inquiring minds, it's called orans. Early Christians, and then they stood and they gave God praise and they held up their hands, didn't they? Let's do that now. You want to? You guys can practice with us if you'd like. Lord, we thank you for these beautiful children and all that they've learned, and we thank you for the opportunity to serve them. Amen. Okay? Now, how else did we learn to pray? Remember about turn around. And how else did we learn? We could kneel at the altar or we could kneel at the side of our beds. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all the times that we can kneel before you to show you our reverence. We pray for those who have knees that won't do this anymore. We pray for all of those who don't know you. Amen. Okay, ladies, now you may go back to your seats. Thank you. So we came up with all kinds of ways that we can stay plugged in because we can't give our light if we're not plugged in. Then on Wednesday, we read John 8, verse 12. And it's a good thing I've got these marked or we'd be here even longer. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. And on Wednesday, we ask, how many are afraid of the dark? Anybody? We're going to ask the grown-ups. How many of you were ever afraid of the dark as a child? Some of you aren't being honest, and you're holding your hands down really low, because I was. And the reason we're afraid of the dark is because we can't see what's going to happen in front of us. We can't see who's next to us, and we can't see what's going on in the room around us. But when we receive Jesus, he works like this flashlight. And he goes before us, lighting the way, doesn't he? He makes it so we can see our steps. We can see what's around us. Oh, I saw a monster. I'm pretty sure there's a, I saw a monster. No, that wasn't a monster. That was a beautiful little girl. See, the light helps us to see things in the right light and to see people in the right light. And on Thursday... On Thursday, let me read from John 12, verses 35 to 36. Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light so that the darkness may, may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you're going, do you? While you have the light... Believe in the light so that you might become children of the light. To become a child of the light, you simply give Jesus your heart, right? You guys remember what happened with my grandson, Austin and Andrew, don't you? Exactly. Oldest grandson, when he was coming home from church one day, some of you have heard this story, says, Nana, how do you give Jesus your heart? Oldest children are very literal. You need to know that. And his little brother next to him said, Brother, it just means you love him. Because Austin was thinking heart transplant. Wasn't he? And so we talked about what it meant to be a child of God and to give Jesus your heart, that it just meant you loved him. And we gave all the children the chance to do that in their own quiet time of prayer with God. And I explained to them that they didn't have to think, say anything special. Adults, there's no special words. We just simply tell Jesus we love him and we want him to be a part of our life. And that if we weren't ready to do it then, because it's a very big commitment, that Jesus would never leave us nor forsake us, that there would always be Jesus next to us whenever we are ready to take him into our heart. 
We're called to be a light in the world. That's what our shirts say. That's what Jesus told us. Not that we're boasting, not that we're better than everybody else, not that we shine that light in somebody's face, because that's really rude, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's that we gently light the way, and we point to the light of the world with a capital L. I want to give thanks to all of you that brought your children. It took time to get here early, to get them dressed, to wake them up and effort, and took time out of your day to come back and get them. We thank you for sharing them with us. It has put life and light and energy in this sanctuary and in our church, and we have absolutely loved having them here. We thank those who fed us all the meals. If you brought, bought a meal, brought a meal, paid for it, would you please stand? All those who brought, yes, thank you. We thank you. We thank our, i calling them our senior counselors because they're a little older than they might be. We have one junior, I guess you could count the juniors, Alice Paris served, if you'll stand, Alice, and our other counselors. And Dominic for Micah. Dominic took a whole week off of work, and now he said he's ready to go back to work. He's tired, but he's taken the week off to be here the whole time. Stay standing. Stay standing. Jeremy, who is up in the balcony, was not only our counselor, but our cameraman and video man all week. And he played with the kids as best as anybody. Also, Liz Wheeler, please stand. You guys are supposed to stay standing, Dominic. They're being bashful. And, of course, we would all be lost without the light of Don Albert to light the way for us. Please stand. We thank you all very much. Now, at this time is our, what we call our time of reflection. You might just want to spend some time thinking about what I've said. Maybe some of you have never asked Jesus to come in your heart. Maybe it felt like a threat or something scary instead of something that was comforting. Maybe some of you asked Jesus in your heart a long time ago and just sort of stepped off of the path and would like to ask him back. Maybe you've followed Jesus all your life and you've forgotten that that light goes before you and you spend a lot of time worrying instead of a lot of time following. Wherever you are on your journey, think about where you can see the light and how God would have you be the light in this world. Closing hymn is Jesus Loves Me, also in our red hymnal, 191, please. Thank you. 
to go to lunch, I'd like to offer the blessing. And when you get received the benediction, I would ask that you let our graduate families go upstairs first, followed by our campers and their family. And you all may go ahead and serve yourselves. I think the, we hope that the caterers have arrived and lunch is up there. If not, you could give you more time to fellowship. Let's offer thanks for our meals. God, we thank you for the food that you feed us the physical food before us on our plates, and the spiritual food that you nourish us with each and every day. We ask your blessing on all of those gathered here and on the food and the time we share together. In Jesus' name, amen. May you go from this place knowing that Jesus loves you. Amen. You guys were very good. Very good, thank you. Thank you. You guys were really good. You were so good, thank you. Thank you, you did really good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you did good, thank you, Liz. I know, it was hard sometimes. Thank you. Thank you, you guys did good. <laughs> it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a lot right. You going for the doctorate? <laughs> Congratulations. Let's see to you. Be careful going up those steps. I'm going to drive. There, there you go. That's a good idea. Okay. Yes, I am. How are Good. you? I'm fine. How's your mom and husband? Yeah, mom, she's just getting worse. It's, you know, yeah, it's just it's a process. Oh, I hate that. Good, Good to see you. Here. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. I know, wonderful. You have a Good week. Let's see if I turn that off. Blessings, sir. Blessings.